that Killer Crocus 4 is a real thing. Ooh yeah. Not only that, but it's going to be on multiple consoles too, like the PS4, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox One. So yeah, pretty excited for that news, just wow. Valkyria Chronicles 4. To be honest, when Sega said they were going to announce a Valkyria project, I didn't even thought it was going to be Valkyria Chronicles 4. I even had half a mind to think they were going to make a mobile game, which would have been disappointing. Uh, but I don't really have a problem with mobile games. I dabbed in Fire Emblem Heroes and I'm pretty invested in Fate Grand Order. Oh god, am I knee deep in Fate Grand Order. But the difference being is that the mobile games were created when the main series of those respected games is still thriving, with the countless Fate material being made into anime such as the Fate Apophrica anime and the Heaven's Feel trilogy movie that's coming along, with the first one already coming out. And for Fire Emblem, well, we had Fates and Echoes that sold pretty well. The Valkyria Chronicles series on the other hand, well, it's safe to say that it wasn't doing so well financially, which was really unfortunate since Valkyria Chronicles 1 and Valkyria Chronicles 3 are just great games. Add in the development of Valkyria Revolution, which from what I've heard does even really felt like a proper Valkyria Chronicles game. And yeah, the series wasn't really doing well, and expectations of Sega being able to deliver an experience like 1 and 3 was really low. But to our surprise, the Valkyria project that Sega has been developing, and for quite a while now since it's 90% done, is Valkyria Chronicles 4. Not a spin-off, but a console one, with the game coming back to using the Canvas engine, which was the graphical engine that the first Valkyria Chronicles had. which it used to deliver its unique and strong water painting s anime aesthetic that really made it stand out among the other anime associated games at the time. And to add even further, there's also a return to the Blitz combat engine, with its unique blend of SRPG mechanics with real-time third-person shooter elements that emphasize the tactical side of the game. Now, some people are probably saying that expecting the Blitz combat engine to return in another numbered game should be a given since Valkyria Chronicles 2 and 3 had the Blitz engine too, but with the sudden development of Valkyria Revolution, a deviation on the main series combat engine that nobody really asked for, as well as it being developed at a time where the Valkyria Chronicles series wasn't really doing so well financially, I think there was a worry that the next Valkyria Chronicles games, if we were going to have any, wouldn't really have the Blitz combat engine and would focus on what Valkyria Revolution did. Fortunately, that isn't the case with Valkyria Chronicles 4 still looking like it has the Blitz combat engine. But besides that, let's actually look into what Valkyria Chronicles 4 is actually going to bring to the series from the very limited information we have. But the first thing to talk about is probably its setting, most notably around the time frame where the fourth game is going to take place. Now it's going to take place during the Second European War, I think around the same time where Gallia is invaded by the Imperials that was led by Maximilian. But we're not playing as Gallians this time. We'd be playing as Federation forces, which is really interesting since I could see the battles being even larger in scale compared to what we see in the first game. Not only in terms of gameplay, but of story as well, since the second European war is mainly between the Empire and Federation, with us possibly seeing what the main f Imperial forces is capable of which is pretty different from what we see in Valkyria Chronicles 1, where it was just a division of the Imperial forces that was under command of one of its Imperial princes. Mind you, not even one of its high standing princes within the monarchy. Sorry, not sorry Maximilian. And this overall is a great contrast to the first game's conflict, which was admittedly a small conflict on the grand scheme of things. Albert, a small conflict that could have had great ramifications, if Maximilian Gambit actually paid off in the first game, or even if certain events in the third game played out differently, but still a small conflict within the eyes of the two major superpowers that are vying for supremacy in the war. Now even with the larger scale, I'm probably not seeing Valkyria Chronicles 4 story detailing the end of the second European war. Mostly because that the war is still ongoing in Valkyria Chronicles 2, which is the furthest in the timeline, 1937 CE, and this game is taking place in 1935 CE. Albert, they might do a time skip, like uh, in Geonology, 
but there's really no information supporting this, at least from what I've seen personally at the time of this recording. What I am seeing is that the scale of the story and conflict is probably going to be bigger from what we've seen in the past Valkyrie Chronicles games. Just based on the fact that we're playing as soldiers from the Federation, who are one of the two superpowers in Europa. From what I've seen so far, we're probably going to take part of one of the major operations that happened during the Second European War. It's also going to be interesting to see the game build up the lore around the Federation, since there's not really much known about them aside of the negative view we have of them in Valkyria Chronicles 1 and 2 with Jean Townshed and parts of the government being corrupt with all the backdoor dealings they had in order to get what they want. It would be good to see how normal citizens of the Federation act as well as knowing the history behind the Federation and some actually good points to the Federation rather than the view we had of them in Valkyria Chronicles 1 and 2 which was warranted given the situation but it would be nice to see the, some redeemable parts about the Federation. Now even with the larger scale, it does seem that the game is still going to concentrate on focusing on a squad of characters, which is good since it allows them to be able to build out and develop these characters in interesting ways like in the past games. Well, Valkyria Chronicles 1 and 3 more so than 2. And can I just point out the fact they have a freaking dog in the trailer, which is pretty awesome. It's like Koromaru from Persona 3 all over again. Anyway, in terms of characters, I won't really discuss much about them, since there's not really much information about them that we know as of yet. But it does seem that the war is going to leave quite a toll on them to say the least. Well, at least from what we see in the trailer, which is going to be interesting to see how it unfold and see how that developed the characters down the road. And yeah, overall pretty excited that we'd be playing as the Federation especially with what we know about the Federation from past games, and this game really does give a great opportunity to expand on the already interesting world of Europa, which is pretty great. But playing as the Federation isn't the only thing about the setting we know. It seems like Valkyria Chronicles 4 is going to have a focus on winter warfare. Well, just based on how a good amount of the scenes seem to have snow on them, which is interesting, and probably going to add an interesting terrain effects on the map. And talking about maps, now that we're back on console, I'm really hoping to see the return of unique large scale maps with each map having their own identity to them, with each being fun to plan around, like in the first game. Since the second and third game, there was a lot of reused maps, which was the weakest point of the second and third game, which they had to do because of the PSP limitations. I'll bet the map design wasn't god awful in 2 and 3, but it still wasn't as good as the first game. But now that we're back on console, I'm really hoping to see unique handcrafted maps that give each battle their own unique experience like in Valkyria Chronicles 1, rather than just seeing a map reused so many times in 2 and 3 with those maps having to be designed around being used multiple times, which made them feel generic. Wow, that's a big tangent from just talking about how the game's gonna have a snow theme to it. Let's see, what's next? Oh yeah, the Valkyria we see for a few seconds. Wow, that's a lot of blue sphere Valkyria beams that we see there. Not much to say about her as she only appears for a second or two. Though this does get me to wonder if we're gonna learn more about the Valkyrs in this game. There's also going to be a new class in Valkyria Chronicles 4, which are namely the Grenaders. Now from the information I managed to scrounge up, they seem to be long range attackers that are effective against both infantry and tanks, which makes me think they might be like the mortars you can see in past games, but now you can use them, but the offset to that is that they can't fight back, which makes me think they might have a unique range modifier for the weapon, like you can't aim this weapon too close like how archers in Fire Emblem can't fight back units on adjacent square. It's also interesting to hear that you can uh, use the grenaders to fire on units that you don't even have a line of sight on as long as other units can see them, which really does make them feel a lot like mortars. And this really does allow it to synergize well with the scout and allow the scout recon ability to be highlighted more. Another interesting thing to know in the interview is that they say the Grenader can hit long range or into higher altitudes. 
Which gets me thinking, are we going to have battles that have, that have multiple elevation now? That might make some interesting level design. We had maps that had like two level elevation in past Valkyria Chronicles games, but maybe we're going to have more level of elevation in this game, which could make for some interesting battles. Now the Grenader doing effective damage against both tanks and infantry units is the part that got me a bit thinking since if they are too effective, that will make the Lancer and Sniper class kind of useless since those two class niches are basically being specialty units that can take down specific units, namely Lancers for anti-tank units or anti-vehicle units, and Snipers being the anti-personnel unit killers. And if they make it too weak, there will be no point in the class besides doing pot shots against the enemy units while the rest of your offensive base units, like the Shock Trooper, get close enough to deal with the enemy which can make them a bit too one note of a class to deploy. Now one way I can see this working is if they make it that the damage done with the Grenader is static and do quite a bit of damage but there's no critical modifier like doing headshots or radiator damage, like how grenades are in past games. And maybe do something with the ammo recharge system possibly working differently for the weapon, just so that you have to think on how to use the Grenader class, but whenever you do use it, it feels powerful. Regardless, it'd be pretty interesting how they balanced the Grenader, and I do hope they are able to balance it well, to the point where the Grenader is an interesting class to strategize around, without it diminishing the other classes in the game. Speaking of classes, look like class changing is also going to be in 4, which was in 2 and 3 as well. So yeah, from everything I've heard and looked up, it looks like it's going to be awesome. So is there anything I heard that I possibly don't like? Possibly. In the Famatsu article, it details the classes that are going to be in the game, which are namely Scout, Engineer, Truck Trooper, Lancer, Sniper, and the new Grenader class. Isn't there some classes missing like Armor Tech, Gunner, Fencer? Now the possibility exists that they simply just fuse some of the classes together with the utility of the armor tech, gunner, fencer, etc. might be built into the main the six classes you already detailed that's going to be in the game. With those classes being able to use the utilities of the gunner, armor tech, and fencer, etc. if they change the weapon the unit is wearing. And I'm hoping that's the case because if they did remove them, it'd be disappointing to me since I do think that the classes that got added in Valkyria Chronicles 2 and Modifying 3 added much to the gameplay. I especially love Valkyria Chronicles 3 version of the armor tech. Diet saves me so many times in that game. So yeah, really hoping to just combine the utilities of the classes together rather than just outright removing the classes that Valkyria Chronicles 2 introduced. Another thing that I'm surprised about is that Valkyria Chronicles 4 hasn't had a PC port announcement yet. At least at the time of this recording. I find that strange since Valkyria Chronicles Remaster, which was on Steam, and it sold pretty well, or at least that's what I heard. So I would think they will also release it on PC since there's a pretty sizable fan base there already. At least more so than comparing it to the Switch and Xbox One. I mean, I'm really glad it's going to be available on more consoles so that more people can experience the Valkyria Chronicles series. I just hope a PC version comes just so that the Valkyria Chronicles fans on the PC can play the fourth game. As for what version I'll be getting, I'll be getting the PS4. But yeah, overall I'm pretty excited about Valkyria Chronicles 4. The return of the Canvas engine, the return of the Blitz Combat engine after the Valkyria Revolution fiasco, the game premise allowing an excellent opportunity to expand on the world of Europa, as well as allowing us to see the scope of the Second European War main conflict, the characters being looking to be pretty interesting from the trailer, the Grenadier class being an interesting class just from the previews, and the game is also returning to the first game's roots in terms of influence. There's like one thing I'm worried about which is the removal of the Valkyria Chronicle 2 classes, but overall I'm pretty hyped. Anyway, that's pretty much my thoughts and speculations of Valkyria Chronicles 4. 
Hope you guys enjoy my ramblings, and I'm curious what are your thoughts or speculations on Valkyria Chronicles 4. Anyway, this is Peter47890 Cyrus, signing off.